I'd like to take you on an amazing journey. With a chance meeting and along the way, a total life and career shift. In the summer of 1994, I was finishing up my college degree, and I had gotten the opportunity to be part of a newly formed urban fishing program. My first day of the internship, I was running late, I was lost, I was about to check the whole thing. I had even gone as far to formulate my excuse. Something stopped me in my tracks in my car as I was frantically trying to figure out where I was going, and I thought, you know, you're better than that. You don't need to make up excuses. You said you'd be there. You need to be there. My next gut instinct was, take a left. I took a left, and I drove right into Wash Park, which was the park that I was supposed to be at. As I was walking up the path, there was a guy standing on some steps to a building. His hair was all messed up. His glasses were down on his nose. He had cut off Levi shorts and sandals. Let me remind you, it was 1994. So I walk up, he looks at me and he says, are you Stacy? And I said, yeah, I'm Stacy. He said, I'm Scott, you're late. And I said, yes, I know, I'm so sorry. He said, would you please get inside? We've got a ton of kids in there. We're trying to teach them how to fish. We need your help. I'd never really fished before in my life. I didn't know what I was doing. I jumped in anyway. That summer, I taught kids fish anatomy, taught them how to cast. And the best part was seeing a kid's face light up when they caught their first fish. It was a magical, magical summer. I was going to graduate from college, and I was going to go into research. I was maybe going to go to med school. That summer experience and that chance of following my gut changed my whole course direction. I wanted to teach kids. When Scott and I got, to start, got talking, we found out pretty quickly that we shared a similar background. We're both wildlife biologists. Nobody told us growing up what a wildlife biologist was. They never said, you know, you could go do this for a career, you need to take these classes, you need to do this internship. We didn't have that support. We got to talking and we decided, you know, if we ever make it, if we ever do something in life, we want to start a program where we encourage and engage kids early on in life so that they know that there's careers out there for them. That summer, Scott also asked me periodically, would you go out with me? Would you go have a beer? Go get something to eat. The last day of the summer was August 9th. I always told him, I have something to do. I'm busy. I can't make it. My biggest excuse? I was engaged to be married. I never wore my engagement ring to work. I was afraid of losing it in the pond when I was taking a fish off the hook. But now, in hindsight, I think I was worried about a lot more. I wasn't ready to get married. And so Scott and I went out that August 9th, that last day of work, and the way that he got me to go out was he told me, I might never see you again. I was like, all right, how can I pass that up? Let's go out. And so we went out. We had an amazing time. That evening when I got home, I knew I couldn't get married. I knew I was going to have to call it off. The kicker, though, was that my wedding was scheduled for September 19th. It wasn't very far away. So Scott's been with me through a broken engagement. <laughs> He's been with me through starting an amazing family, our three beautiful children, and he's been with me through starting Environmental Learning for Kids, or ELK for short. We co-founded ELK 17 years ago. And the reason that we did that was that we wanted to encourage kids and their families to get connected to the outdoors. We wanted to do that through fishing, through hiking, and through camping. We have amazing statistics. 82% of our alumni are kids of color. 60% are studying or have graduated in a science, technology, engineering, or math field. The national averages are single digits. <laughs> We're making a difference. With environmental learning for kids, we've never really had a home. We've had leased office space in a government building. We live in Montbello. And the Montbello community is a community that sometimes struggles. We have a very high dropout rate, 
and many of our students in our program will not graduate from high school unless they have our support. And a majority of our kids in the community will be the first generation, like Scott and I, to go to college. So, about five years ago, I started driving by this plot of land in the community. I drive by it on my way to work in the morning. I drive by it on my way home. Pretty soon, I started telling my kids, you know, we should really get that land for elk. It'd be awesome. We could do programs out there. It'd be amazing. Pretty soon, the elk kids started calling it the elk land. I called the real estate agent. It was listed at $1.6 million. It was an unattainable dream at that point. But through a lot of perseverance, through a lot of working with amazing, amazing people, last year we were able to raise $1.1 million, and we bought that five and a half acres in the Montbello community. <laughs> Now, we have big plans for this land. We're going to build an education center. We're going to restore a majority of the land, four and a half acres, back to a short grass prairie. The Montbello community is situated right next to a former Superfund site. There's a lot of environmental justice issues that have happened in the Montbello community. We deserve this for the community. We need to have a place for kids and their families to go, to walk, to learn about the outdoors, and we're going to make this happen. I need to raise about $3.5 million with the help of a lot of amazing partners and foundations and folks just like you, but I know it will happen. <laughs> My catalyst moment, I was frustrated. I usually have to get pissed off and mad, and then I can act. It's okay to admit that if that's how you get motivated. I was tired of people talking about what should be done. I decided just to do it. Jumping in with both feet is scary. But every morning when I wake up, I have to let that fear go through me. I look in the mirror and I ask myself, who do you think you are? that you're going to be able to get this done. I close my eyes, I take a deep breath, and I look in the mirror, and I say to myself, you can do this. You have the people around you to make it happen. You deserve this. Your community deserves this. You will make this happen. I do that every morning. I want you to think about what you want to do in life. That thought that just popped into your head right now, What do you want to do in life? Hold on to it. Don't change it for anybody. No matter how unattainable it seems, how out there it seems, that is your most authentic path in life. I want you to turn to the person next to you right now and share with them in one word, what do you want to do in life? Go. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Round of applause for everybody. Round of applause. <laughs> That's, that's almost like jumping off a cliff at the Grand Canyon. You got a little taste of it. Congratulations. You've taken the first step. You have shared your dream with somebody. Now, you need to keep sharing it. Don't write it in your journal and hide it away and think that it's going to magically appear in front of you someday. You need to shout it from the rooftops. You need to tell everybody you meet what your dream is. For this journey, you're going to need resilience. You're going to need strength and bravery. You're going to have many days when you wake up that you don't know if the world is upside down, sideways, or which way it's going. You need to center yourself, put a smile on your face, and just walk through the whole experience like you've got this all taken care of. You know exactly what's going to happen next, and you've got the people around you to make it happen. So what? You think it's a lie? I might have thought it was a lie 20 years ago when I started this journey, It's how you perceive it. Now, many times, women, we're not encouraged to trust our gut. You have to trust your gut. You have to feel it inside your being. You need to practice this. If you're an educator, you're either a dream maker or you're a dream breaker. You have the power to change the course of a child's life. And every child deserves to wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, I deserve this in life, and I'm working towards my dream. This summer, at the end of the summer, we had our final camping trip, 
And one of the kids asked, how'd you and Scott meet? Scott loves to tell the story. At the end of the story, everybody was laughing. And I just had this aha moment that I shared. And I said, you know, if Scott and I hadn't have met, and I hadn't have followed my gut not to get married, my kids, my three kids, my three beautiful kids wouldn't be here. One of the Elk students was looking into the fire and kind of kicked a rock with his foot and said really softly, yeah, and we wouldn't be here either. Thank you.